see it. <laughs> everyone for coming. I'm Amy Chamberlain, chef and owner of the Perfect Wife Restaurant and the Other Woman Tavern. And my show, Life of the Party, the object is to squeeze recipes out of friends and family that are very popular at potlucks. Today, my mom, Linda Drunzik, is going to teach me how to make Texas caviar and tomato and mozzarella tart. Are you ready, mom? I am. Come on up. So this is the interview segment where you all get to learn a little bit more about my guest. I'd like to think I know everything about my mom, but obviously that's not true. So let's see what else we can squeeze out of her today, a few secrets. So mom, you, um, you grew up on Long Island, right. born in Brooklyn, and went to Green Mountain College where right. you met Aunt Linda. That's right. Um, she taught you how to make Texas caviar, right? Yes. She gave you that recipe. Can you tell us a little story about you and Aunt Linda? Well, let's see. I know uh, you two were partners in crime. Oh, yes, we definitely were. Um, one of them that I remember, in fact, I was telling the president of Green Mountain College just the other day, is that uh, in mud season here in Vermont, which is usually around the end of March, the beginning of April, um, all of us in the dorms would put on our bathing suits or our gym shorts. And back in those days, we wore those disgusting bathing caps. And we would go outside, and we would take running leaps and slide into this mud puddle and be totally disgusting <laughs> and then come back in. So that was one thing that I can remember about Aunt Linda and myself. Now, what was the other? Let's well, see. I remember you saying some a story once about how you and Aunt Linda made Aranda, that's my sister, oh, right. a birthday cake. Yes. Um, my friend Linda came up for the weekend with her kids, and she had brought a beautiful birthday cake that, I think it was a carrot cake with cream cheese frosting, and this was Friday night. Well, Aranda's birthday was on Saturday, and we all got into the cake Friday and ate the whole cake before her birthday. <laughs> so Linda and I went to the store and we got a pineapple that had been cored and peeled. And we took it back home and we got a big fat candle and stuck it in the middle and lit it. And that was her birthday cake. <laughs> Luckily, Aranda liked pineapple. <laughs> You and Aunt Linda were always scoundrels. Oh, we were devils. <laughs> <laughs> well, you seem to be very calm here and not very nervous. This isn't your first time on television, is it, Mom? Oh, no, it isn't. Years ago, there was a TV show called Reach for the Stars, and it was a, a game show, and I was on it three days in a row. I won the first two, two days, and the third day I lost. But it was fun being on, and I never did win the mink coat, which was the big prize. But I got a lot of other stuff. That was a prize these days. On That's a TV right. Show. I'd be afraid to wear it. Yes. <laughs> um, and you've been on another show, weren't you, on Johnny Carson? Oh yes, I was. I was in the uh, audience with your father, and um, somebody came up and asked me to play "Stump the Star," uh, "Stump the Band." So I came up with a song. <clears throat> excuse me, that I had sung in my high school chorus called Little Nest of Heavenly Blue. And of course the band didn't know it, so then they asked me to sing it. And uh, all I could remember was the first line, but at least I got the first line out. <laughs> my little nest of heavenly blue. And that was it. <laughs> and there was your 15 minutes of fame. That's your, right. Your, that's right. Your, fifth, your fourth 15 minute of fame. Right. right. Yep. Um, well, growing up with you as my mom, we always had really delicious dinners. And Thank you. I just wonder what influenced you or who influenced you to want to cook so much and be so creative in the kitchen? Well, my mother was a good cook. Um, she made wonderful sauerbraten. She was German and uh, several other she German still dishes. Is. She is, right. <laughs> she is still German, right. And she's 97. <laughs> and um, 
then when your father and I were first married, we both worked in New York and we'd come home after work and we would sit and have our dinner on little TV trays, which today the thought kills me, but, and we'd watch the Julia Child show. And that was great. We, I learned a lot of things from Julia. Yeah. And I've inherited a couple of those cookbooks, which I always refer to for yes. classic dishes. Like That's right. Beef bourguignon and coca van and chocolate mousse and. Right. And stuffed crepes made with, stuffed with crab meat. That's one of the ones in there oh, too. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. Right. I'm serving some crepes this evening to a wonderful group of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do some work with the food cupboard. You're the treasurer of the food cupboard. I am. And um, I know the food cupboard gives food to people all year long, but tell me a little bit about the summer lunch program and some other things that happen with the food cupboard in the summer that help benefit people in need. Okay. Well, the summer lunch program is actually run by the Interfaith Council, but the food cupboard helps support that. And it's to provide lunches every day during the week for children who would normally get free lunch during the school year. So we usually have a loaf of bread and, um, you know, some cold cuts or peanut butter and jelly or something like that and some fresh fruit and usually a milk card to give them free milk. Um, as far as the food cupboard goes, in the summertime, the uh, Equinox Valley Nursery right here in town donates a big spot. Uh, I don't know exactly how large the area is, but it's very large, and free seeds and volunteers plant vegetables. Last year we had over 8,000, 10,000, 10,000 pounds of vegetables that we gave out to our recipients, and it's very popular. Were you able to store some of those vegetables and distribute them throughout the winter? No. Well, there were some squash, a winter mm -hmm. squash that we could store, but most of the other stuff, you know, lasts for yeah. a week or so, and then that's it. Right. But it was very popular. And how would someone go about volunteering for this? Is it in the paper, the, the planting day, or is there a um, group that always does it? There is usually a, a group of people that do do it, but I think that we probably could use some more volunteers. And so if anybody wanted to call the food cupboard phone, which is 362-0057, and leave a message, we could get back to them and let them know what the days are for picking and planting and weeding and so on. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't volunteer to weed, but I might plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Reminds me of growing up. Get out there and weed if you want to go to Cindy's house. <laughs> um, and my last question that I always ask my guests, um, which gives us a little insight into their emotional stability. <laughs> You've just made something from Julia Child's cookbook. You, it took you three days to prepare. You made the cassoulet. You made your own confit. You soaked and cooked the beans yourself. You made your own sausage, and then you're pulling it out of the oven, and it slips from your hand, and it spills all over the floor. What do you say? Oh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what a great mom. What if, what if your daughter wasn't in the room? <laughs> I don't want to say that on camera. <laughs> oh, you're such a polite mom. Well, thanks, I'll mom. tell you yeah. one thing, though. Um, one time I had made my fruit tart, you know, that big fruit tart yes. with fresh fruit all over. It's a, really a beautiful tart. And we were going down to see Grandma in Bristol, and I was taking one out of the refrigerator, and it dropped face down. Mm -hmm. I got some spatulas. I picked it up, wiped it off. Grandma never knew the difference. Well, she would have done the same thing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, there's many options to what you can do. Right. <laughs> the three-second rule is very popular. <laughs> Not at my restaurant, of course. So uh, thanks, Mom. And You're welcome. let's go and do some cooking. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, Mom, here we are in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, we are making two things today, the Texas right. caviar and the mozzarella, fresh mozzarella and tomato tart. Right. So we're going to organize our planning and cooking here. 
to make things work time-wise for us. The, you're going to show me how to make the pastry crust for the tart. Okay. Because that needs to chill. So right. we'll make that and we'll chill that. And while that's chilling, you can help me with the Texas caviar. And when that's done, we'll assemble the tart and bake it. And okay. And we'll have lunch. Good. Okay. Great. So um, this is a basic pie crust, right? Right. It's one and three quarter cups of flour and a tablespoon of sugar and a half a teaspoon of salt. Yep, which we've put in there. Right. And, and now we're going to add 10 tablespoons of butter. Okay. Chilled. And I did kind of zip this, the dry ingredients together a little bit. Okay. Good. And this, this butter was in the fridge, so it's nice and chilled. Right. Mom and I went to King Arthur Flour and we took a pie baking class a few years ago. And when we were talking about this recipe, I said, do you remember anything from the King Arthur Flour visit? <laughs> and what did you remember, Mom? And I said that I remember that they said, never mix your butter in the Cuisinart. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I said, you have to. Maybe you have to. Aha. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Because they said that when you make pie crust, you're, you're better off to mix your, your dry ingredients, but then put the butter in with here, or with the dry ingredients, and kind of crumble it with your fingers so it's not too finely mixed. Every recipe seems to say make it look like cornmeal, but right. that's not really a good flaky pie crust. You want chunks of butter, small chunks of butter. And I there. think that I've... And that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And so when mom told me that, I said, oh, I don't remember that. Because she, she said, should I put the butter in with my fingers? And I said, no, because then the heat of your hand is going to soften the butter. You well, want the butter to be cold. But it seemed to work. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. All right. Now we add about a third of a cup of cold water. And when making right. pie crust, we put ice in there just to make sure that the water is cold because we don't want warm water because then you're really melting your butter. So, and we're gonna, we're gonna mix it in with a fork. Okay. And, and we don't really measure, we just kind of go by feel. Do you um, wanna mix while I pour? Sure. Um, one thing I remember from, um, King Arthur also is that they said to err on the side of a little bit moister rather than dry and I had always been afraid of putting too much water in but they're right it makes it much easier to roll out okay mom I think we need a little more a little bit more I think And we can go in with our hands. I think it needs more though. Okay. Just a little bit more. Okay. Should have worn a short sleeve shirt. I know. <laughs> then everyone would have seen all the burn scars on my arms. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Good. so we're just going to get this in a ball. Maybe you can work it in a ball right there. Okay. Put this in the sink. And really, really try to knead it, I think. Okay. Mom's teaching me how to make this, but I kind of... <laughs> Tell her what to do. <laughs> She's the professional chef. I'm just the uh, homemaker. But if you had been interviewing me and asked me what or who influenced me to want to cook so much, I would have said you. Oh, thank you, Amy. You're welcome, Mom. And Grandma. And Grandma, right. But by the time we had dinner at Grandma's house, she made a lot of things from boxes. It was very interesting. Box. She didn't when I was young, but later on she got lazy after my brother and I left the house. <laughs> <laughs> but she okay. makes the best Christmas cookies ever, and I oh, make them every yes. year. Yes, she does. Okay. Make All right. Good. And you want to form the dough into a disc so that when you do pull it out and it's time to roll it, it's already started. Some, some recipes say roll it in a ball. I think this one even does. But if you have a ball, you're trying to push it down right away. So you might as well just do a disc like that. Right. All right. So, so get that in the fridge. 
Okay, just put it right on there. Yeah, wrap it there because otherwise. All right. Okay, there you go. I'll throw this in the fridge. Okay, here's the Texas caviar. Now, um, I had told the TV station that we were going to make Texas caviar, and Jeremy, bless his soul, asked me if it was catfish roe. <laughs> and what was I going to be doing with this catfish roe? Well, there is nothing fishy about this caviar. No. It is a black bean sort of salsa salad. Black, no, black eyed peas. Black eyed pea, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you, Mom, keeping me in line. Yep. Black eyed peas. Right. And um, so we're going to throw everything in there. Why don't you start throwing okay. stuff in? Okay. Well, first of all, it's two cans of black eyed peas. And I have to say that living here in Manchester, you cannot get canned black eyed peas except at the health food store. For some reason, they're not carrying it. I guess we don't have enough. Texans here. <laughs> At any rate, um, you can sometimes get it frozen or you can get it dried or as I said at the health food store you can buy it in cans. Um, so two cans of black eyed peas, four scallions chopped, um, a four ounce can of chopped green chilies, and this is a very easy recipe. You just mix everything at one time. Um, it says a four ounce can of jalapenos. I don't put them in because I have acid reflux. People that like spicy stuff are going to put it in. Um, this is really a lot less than four, but these are fresh. Fresh, yeah. So, so in, in lieu of the four ounce can of um, four ounce can of jalapenos, I put in a half of a pretty large jalapeno that I diced this right. recipe calls for green and red pepper, but I used orange and red because we have the green from the jalapeno. So we're just adding a little more color. Right. This is a half, half of each of the peppers. And let's see, four radishes minced. And I really like the radishes. I think they add a really nice flavor to it. Um, and this then... a good recipe for springtime because radishes are the first thing that come up in your garden. And you always... At least I know that when your radishes come up, you're like, what am I going to do with all these radishes? Well, yep. now you can make Texas caviar. Right. And then the cilantro. Um, I can't stand cilantro. but <laughs> So how many? The two I, shakes would be what? About like that? Yeah. I this is put in fresh. a little bit more. Okay. This is fresh chopped like cilantro. Yes. So for those of you who like cilantro, there it is. Yeah. And the recipe has dried cilantro in it, but I don't recommend dried cilantro. I don't really know yeah. if it really tastes like cilantro. So I highly recommend chopping some fresh. Well, you know, I've had this recipe for so many years that years ago you never heard of cilantro. Right. So you never found it fresh in the supermarket, at least not here in the north, but <clears throat> now you can find it all over. Okay, and then a juice of a lime. Okay. And Amy showed me the way to get the juice to release better is to just roll it like this. You can cut it. All right, thank you, Mom. And I'll do just, the other half. Yep. Just add that. that. Looks so pretty. By the way, I have copies of both of these recipes on a sheet for anybody who's interested in taking it. And a half a cup of a good quality creamy Caesar salad dressing. Um, it says half a cup. I usually kind of go by feel or look um, when I mix it. Oops, it's supposed to kind of look crumb, uh, creamy. You don't want it too juicy. And then the last thing is a cup of crumbled feta cheese. Today we're using Maple Brook feta, cow's milk feta, whole milk feta. It's delicious. It's from Bennington, Vermont. We're also using their fresh mozzarella in our tart today. We yep. try to use as many local things as we can. And we have fun doing it. Yep. 
So mom, do you, do you generally make this and let it sit for a little, like a day or a couple of hours? Um, I usually put it in the refrigerator for at least a couple of hours to chill. <clears throat> and <clears throat> as I put on the recipe, if you have it as a party with the dip or with the chips, sometimes if you have any leftover, it's wonderful. It's a little side dish. It's like a like a side salad. It's really tasty, and you everybody could bring seems it maybe instead of like a three bean salad. That's to a right. Picnic or something. Yes, you could. And also, I bet it would be delicious on like blackened fish or yeah. grilled chicken. Yes, like that. Yeah, with that some cornbread on the side. Right. Okay. So well, that looks great. There it is. Thank you. Sure. So now we're going to clean up a little bit, and we'll come back and roll out our pastry dough that's been in the fridge oh, for you an know hour. What I forgot? Salt and pepper. Well, better do that, Mom. Okay. The, the cheese can be salty, so you definitely, when you're adding salt to this, you don't want to go yeah. overboard. Right. And okay. I prefer fresh ground pepper. All yeah. right, Mom. All right, good. Looking good. All right, so we'll be right back. Okay, Mom. Now we're going to roll out this well-chilled pastry. And as I was taught by my French chef in culinary school, Michel Leborn, when you season or flour things, you want the flour to distribute evenly. So the higher you start up, the more evenly things will be distributed. So make it rain, he said, make it rain. That's what we're doing. Okay, there you go. All right. And I'm gonna roll this out for my mom. because right. She's a better I, roller than I am. I enjoy it. So when you're rolling out dough, you wanna start from the middle and pull to the sides. Move your dough around a lot. But if you go like this, then you're going to get divot in the middle and thick sides. So you want to start from the middle and push to the sides. And try to keep it as unawkward for yourself as possible. So that means instead of trying to roll this way, you want to just keep turning the dough itself and you get even pressure. You make it rain a little bit more, flip it over. She's not really French. <laughs> I'm a French kisser. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Oops. I didn't start doing that until I was married, though. Right, just so you know. Now, we want it to be round which isn't always the easiest thing to do. And we might just do a little bit of patching. Yes, that's it. Patch it up. Use that little knife. Whoops. All right. So what we want to do is make it about as big as this with an inch or two over because I like to fold the edge over into this to give it a sturdier edge. So I think we're good. And this crust looks great. It has nice big chunks of butter in it because we didn't over mix in the butter and that will make the crust flakier, which will be delightful. There we go. So then we're just going to trim this a little bit. And, and what my mom taught me when we were little is that you take these pieces and you coat them in cinnamon sugar and bake them. Well, it's even better if you put uh, melted butter on first. Oh. And then the cinnamon I sugar. Got that. I'm sure a step. lot of people do that because it's such a nice way to use leftover crust. Yes. It seems like we have so much leftover crust, we could almost make a whole nother tart. Hmm, I know, I don't know why that is. So, this is a 10 inch tart pan, by the way, that we're using with a removable bottom. So I just fold that in like that. Mom said when she makes it, she usually just does one edge, but 
Since I'm in the restaurant industry, I like things to be sturdier. Yeah, that's a good idea. I never thought about that. Good. Okay. All right. So now we put two tablespoons of uh, coarse ground mustard on the on the crust and spread it around evenly or as evenly as you can. I think I'm going to use my fingers. All right, go on. And I thought this was interesting because the tart is Italian and I don't generally put mustard with Italian food, but it really is delicious. The sharpness of it is great. Mm, it is. So tell me while you're doing this, Mom, who you got this recipe from. Because I, it seems like potluck recipes are always recipes that you got from somebody else. Right. I got this from my friend Judy Farkas, who lived here for many years and just recently moved back to Connecticut. And she said it is very similar to the recipe that Al Ducci's makes at the restaurant. And if you're watching the, the show, store. Al, you can let us know if this really is similar. Yeah. Okay, there's okay. a wet one right there for you. Good, thank you. And then the next thing we do are the, is the cheese. Okay, I'm gonna bring the plate closer. So. Yep. So you just layer the cheese in, in a concentric circle. Mom's left-handed. She's going in the counterclockwise direction, <laughs> and I would have gone the other way. So funny how I would naturally have gone this way, and she's going that way. Use those in the middle. This is um, about a pound of fresh mozzarella, and the balls that I buy are 12 ounces, so we're using one and a half balls of fresh mozzarella, yep. which is outstanding. Oh, this fresh mozzarella is so good. You could just eat the whole thing plain with nothing on it. So, okay. okay. And now we put the tomatoes on, right? Yes, right. Should I do the tomatoes in the opposite direction? Whatever floats your boat, Mom. I don't want to screw you up. Okay, let's do that. What the heck? The right-handed way. That's right. The right way, as you would say. <laughs> Clockwise. That's all. Right. Oops. This is um, about five tomatoes. These tomatoes are from Maine. They are hothouse grown cluster tomatoes, and they're delicious. It's very hard to get nice tomatoes at this time of year, as we all know. So there are a few. There's a, a hothouse in Vermont. Um, and they, that's called Longwind Farm, and they make what they call vermatoes, um, which are also delicious. I forgot the oil. You forgot the oil? I have failed. Uh-oh. That's all right. All right. Now we do, let me just stick another piece of tomato right in here. Just like it's good. Okay. Short. Okay. All right, now, what else? Okay, the garlic. Chopped garlic. I think I'm gonna let you put that on. Yeah, it, it I'll calls. be touching plenty of garlic later today. Yeah, you don't want, I don't like too much, but. Okay, that looks good. Okay, and it's then, like three cloves of garlic chopped probably. And then the oregano to taste. And when you're using dried spices, it's really good to squish them in your fingers because it releases the essential oils that are hopefully still in the dried leaves of the herbs. So you want to do that every time you're using dried herbs. If you're seasoning soup or sauce or even yeah. putting it on chicken, you're going to cook. And salt then and pepper. Kosher salt is really great when you're cooking because you can get more control with it because the granules are bigger. Granulated salt, regular table salts, can be very overpowering and briny. You think that's enough? I do. Okay. There's the salt. I mean pepper. Fresh pepper is great. And then our imaginary olive oil that I left in the kitchen at home. <laughs> Three tablespoons drizzled on. And um, maybe we can find some in the cupboard later. Yeah. 
but we will um, then bake this at 400, right, for 40 minutes? Uh, well, it says 45 minutes or until the tart is bubbling. So. Okay, and I think in our convection oven when we tested this recipe the other day, it was about 40 minutes and it was nice and bubbly. Okay. So um, I think there's some little television magic going on back here and we have one that's already done. Look at that. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Bubbling, gorgeous, delicious. So, Mom, I am so happy that you taught me these things. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And let's take a little break. And mm -hmm. I'll have to say goodbye to you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mom, for um, coming and welcome. showing me those recipes. I can't wait to wow my friends with them. <laughs> Good. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And it now I'm having you on my show. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Mom, for being here on my Mother's Day episode. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you in TV land. And we'll see you all next time on Life for the Party. party. You spill your glass, you never take the blame. It all ran down your shirt. Who the hell do you think I am? Take your chances and sleep it all